Yeah, so last year, um, when we came into this room, we came, my team came in blind. We didn't really spend any time looking at what was going on before we came in here, and that was intentional. Um, the idea was to just go through a basic analysis of what's happening with the HVAC systems in this space, this room here, the room behind us, and the hallway out there. And we found some pretty significant deficiencies. Uh, some of them were so significant that they really kind of prevented us from looking at any of the downstream issues. So I'm going to really quick walk through some uh, results from last year, talking about what we found and uh, some of the frustrations that we went through in the process. And then I'm going to introduce the exercise for this year, which I designed to not be as frustrating as the one last year. Um, we'll see how that works, uh, but we'll, we'll give it a shot here. So I'm a control systems engineer here at Berkeley Lab. I work in operations, and I run an ongoing commissioning team. So this is our team up here. We've got uh, four technicians, two engineers, three engineers, uh, our intern Tony up there in the top left, and our chief sustainability officer, John Elliott, who sponsors our team. Uh, this has been a really fun team to build because we did it all with, with existing staff. So we took, we took a number of our HVAC mechanics and brought them into a new team and started training them on control systems. Uh, Eric in the top center there, he was a, a basic maintenance mechanic uh, and he is now probably our top controls programmer. He's an absolute genius when it comes to programming and, and troubleshooting. Um, Matt and Ricky in the bottom left there are HVAC technicians who are, have become absolute experts at going through the buildings and finding every single problem and fixing them very quickly. Um, so that's my team, that's what I do. Uh, we do a lot of our work in an application called SkySpark and that's what we're going to be working with today. But real quick, I'm just going to go over last year's exercise. So this was the prompt, the actual lesson plan for last year, and it was pretty simple for me to, to make it because Janie asked me to do a workshop in this room and I knew there was gonna be problems in this room. Uh, so we came in here, we had the whole team of technicians here with a bunch of tools that they use for doing diagnosis, uh, including their laptops that they were plugging into the controllers so we could see the data. And we started digging through all of the problems in this space. Uh, we're working today from building 54 here, Perseverance Hall, and we are in this small section over here, it's called the annex, that was an addition to the building. And it's, besides the boilers, uh, it has a completely independent HVAC system. So this half of the building has its own air handler, there's five VAVs, there's a dedicated chiller, and then it receives boilers or hot water from the boilers operating the rest of the building. Uh, here's a, and I'm going to give you some of these drawings as handouts before we start the exercise, but I'm going to go through them here quick. This one doesn't show up great on the screen here, but this is this annex that we're in, and it shows the five VAV zones. There's one zone for the hallway. There's three zones in this room, because this room used to be three different rooms. And there's one zone in the back here. I didn't tell anybody this before we started last year, so everybody had to figure out on their own that there was three different VAVs in this room, and that was one of our biggest challenges. Uh, I'm gonna actually give you that information this year to make it a little easier. Uh, I'm gonna give you this P&ID drawing that uh, shows the general layout of all of the HVAC equipment except for the boilers. We have a very basic, uh, H pattern air handler here, mixed air unit. Uh, it's right down below us in the basement. <coughs> serving, so we got heating coil, cooling coil, supply fans serving five VAVs, which are up in the ceiling here. Return fan pulling air back and recirculating it. And an outside, or outside air damper for economizer and an exhaust damper for the economizer. I'm hoping most people in the room understand what I just said, but when we do actually go through the exercise, I'm gonna ask you to work in groups 
where at least one person in the group has some industry experience in HVAC, so we can try to help bridge some of those gaps. So when we went through this exercise last year, we started off with the worst quality information, and we progressed through better information sources. So this is an example, a screenshot from when we plugged our old Windows 98 laptop into the thermostat over by the door there. And we're able to see what's happening with that one BMS controller, the VAV box, instantaneously. We can see what's happening right now, but we can't see any trend data, any historical data over time. So then we started looking at the uh, Johnson Controls interface for this space. And this allows us to start putting multiple trend plots on a single screen. This was, a, this was very difficult for a lot of people. It's not an intuitive interface to navigate. Um, and so there was a lot of struggling just trying to get the information up on the screen. Uh, and so this year I've taken care of all that for you and you're just gonna click one button and the information's gonna show up. Uh, we start out looking at an individual piece of equipment, but then we took a step back and started looking at the whole system. So first we started finding problems with individual VAVs, like a damper that wasn't actuating or maybe a reheat valve that was leaking. And that's what we were looking at here when we're looking at an individual piece of equipment. Then we went to some summary information or higher level information. So we're looking at what's happening with the air handler, fan speed, I can't even see everything that's on here. Um, and then some very, very poor temperature control down here at the bottom. Uh, and that was, there was a couple things leading to that. I think I've got a slide to talk about that later though. This is where we're going to be working today. SkySpark is our data warehouse. Um, my team works primarily out of this application. Uh, we have two or three of us that are responsible for integrating all of the different building automation systems on our site into this one single interface. And what that means is that when our technicians are going through and trying to troubleshoot a problem or just do some daily monitoring on the performance of equipment, it doesn't matter which automation system is in that building. They're going to see the exact same views, the exact same data, same colors. So the cooling valve is always going to be blue. The reheat valve is always going to be red. And it's really valuable because it takes away a lot of the complexities of these antiquated systems that we have and just puts the data right in front of them. They still have to go back to those older systems to perform their work, to do any detailed diagnostics or make any changes, uh, but most of our work is done right in this application, and we're gonna only be using this application today. Uh, I'm not gonna go through everything on the report out here, but a uh, couple of the things that we found last year was that there were actually three VAV boxes in this one room, and every one of them has its own thermostat. There's a thermostat in the back of the room there, there's one over by the door, and there's one behind this poster. Uh, all three of them had different set points, so they were all fighting each other. Uh, the biggest problem that we found, however, was that um, there was a lack of airflow. So we couldn't really do a lot of troubleshooting with the VAV boxes because there wasn't enough air coming to them. Uh, and that was because we had an extremely loose fan belt on the supply fan. And so it was only the return fan that was doing all the work. And that, mean, that meant that we were really only recirculating air in the space. We weren't really bringing in very much fresh air. Uh, and that when the economizer operated, we would have dramatic changes in the airflow. Because the return fan would pull, if we, were, if we were in full recirculation, the return fan would move air through the space. But if we tried to go into uh, full economizer, the, all the return fan is doing at that point is pulling air out of the space and there was nothing pushing the air back in. So it, that, that problem was unfortunately something that my team couldn't fix because we don't have anybody who's in the correct union to adjust a fan belt on our team. We used to, but some changes <laughs> meant that now we aren't. And I also promised everybody that I was gonna fix all of these problems last year and then send out a detailed report. However, it took three months to get that fan belt replaced. Um, 
And by that time, I forgot about it. So I started looking at it again last month uh, when Janie reminded me that we were doing this again this year. Uh, and that was kind of advantageous because we had a number of uh, PG&E public safety power shutdown events where they killed power to our entire campus. And that's something that hasn't happened to us in a really long time. Every time one of our buildings loses power, there's a whole bunch of things that don't turn back on. Or they perhaps <laughs> revert back to their old settings and all of the tweaks and optimizations that we performed are nullified. That's what happened here. So I did do a bunch of quick fixes last year and I got things kind of working okay. But then everything got reverted back again a month, a month or two ago. So we're gonna be starting out and we're just gonna look at data from those last two months. And I progressively fixed problems in this zone, although it still feels pretty warm in here. Um, I progressively fixed problems in this zone over the course of several weeks, and we're gonna look at the data over those several weeks and talk about what was wrong, whether it's working well now, and what you might recommend for additional changes. Hmm, is that? Okay, so, um, should I hold off on this one? Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to hand it over to Phil. And Phil's going to give his presentation. And then when I come back after lunch, I'm going to give you the handouts. And I'm going to give you information to connect to the SkySpark server, which is on my laptop. So you're going to have to connect to this Wi-Fi access point, which means you won't have internet access. Cybersecurity wouldn't let me run this on the regular network. Um, but we'll be doing all of, all of the work right in the SkySpark application. So uh, I'll give you the credentials to get on there as soon as uh, we start, and hopefully it won't take too long. Again, I'm going to ask people to get in groups of two or three with at least one person who has some industry experience in HVAC. And I'm also going to ask you to use as few laptops as possible because I really haven't tested this with a whole bunch of people connecting, and I don't want to have everybody sitting there waiting forever. So that, with that, I'll hand it over to Janie, and I'll be back in a half hour. <laughs>